you know, live is a little bit different to the normal well-prepared videos we do, but I, I think they've got some benefit. They allow me to interact with the audience and get your views and that. And and here we have it, the Desert X, Ducati Desert X, just been announced in Australia. 60 have already been sold in Australia, and I've just had two days on it. Now, the way these lives have functioned is in the morning, I've asked you to post some questions and then I'll come and um, in the afternoon and answer them. So this was the Ducati launch. There were two days on the bike. The first day was more about um, tar, freeway. Yeah, they're dirty forks, aren't they, Sam? <laughs> yep. Like the bikes had a workout. So, um, yeah, so in this first uh, couple of days, first day is dirt circuitry. Um, and jumps, um, backing it into corners, power slides, all sorts of stuff, single trail. Uh, day two was very much about taking the bike on an adventure, um, the normal adventure, for want of a better word, that we do. And we covered about, I don't know, 400 k's, I suppose, today. All up, I've had on the bike probably 700, close to 800 k's just probably just a bit under 800 k's there's so much more i got to know uh, got to get to know about the bike but some interesting things happen today and um and i'll go through those in a little while but first i think what might be useful i asked you to if you wanted some questions answered or any comments you wanted to make about the bike and uh this was put out there this morning from you so let's just go through those questions first and then we'll start on any questions you guys have now. So um, Swedbear says, I'd love to hear a comparison between the Desert X and the Tiger 900, which I would guess to be the closest competitor. For example, any differences in stability off-road, balance in general, performance on-road in the twisties, ergonomics. Um, there's a couple of other things there. Uh, throttle response suspension both on and off road yeah so as you know and if you look on mad tv there's a very detailed review of the um, tiger 900 rally pro an excellent bike um, uh, great suspension one of the most underrated bikes in that middle class but the thing is they're very close they're very close and in fact, all the middle range bikes, these 800 to 900 cc's, um, there's a couple of them there that really stand out and are very, very good. So, um, yeah, I encourage you to ride all of them. But as for the Ducati, uh, in comparison, um, it meets or exceeds the Tiger 900 in the whole range of those categories. For me, the Ducati, in terms of its um, handling, is more playful uh it's got a slightly it feels to me like it's got a slightly lower center of gravity uh and you can flick it around the most interesting part of that was i could feel i could change my direction in the air and and it still um performed and landed exactly the way i wanted so a little bit different but yeah you're in the ballpark there all of those bikes in that highly competitive you know, 800, 900 cc twin and in 1000 with the CRF, Honda CRF are really worthy of a look. And as I always say, you've got to ride these bikes. You can ask me questions about them, um, but at the end of the day, you've got to sit on them and ride them. And that's what I've done with this. And uh, I've been very impressed. So let's keep going with the questions. Um, I test rode one last week on light off-road and street, a little slimmer. Uh, lighter, lower and softer power and suspension than my KTM 1090 Adventure R, uh, but bigger than the T700 or KTM 890R. Uh, Little Black Duck, I don't agree with you on that. I, 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 I've got a T7, I own a T7. I don't think this is any bigger than that and I've certainly spent a lot of kilometres on the 890R and um, yeah, I, I don't see any, any difference. Okay, um... Yeah, so at 120 kilometers, the airflow was smooth over the helmet, but a little bit of buffeting on my shoulders and calves, but I'm six foot five or 195 centimeters tall. I rode better than expected. It rode better than expected and easier than my 1090. 
I'd agree with that. But Dave, I am keen to know how does it how does it do adventure um, as I do multi day trips. Well, that's about all he's got to say. I don't want to go on and on about what he's got to say, but that's we're going to test its multi day capacity in the next week. We're going to take it on a three day adventure and head out to uh, Victorian High Country. So that should be good. Uh, going out with Clubby, there's a range of different bikes going. So it'll be interesting how the Desert X uh, goes with those different bikes. So yes, we're going to do that. In terms of this screen, there are two screens available for the, for the Ducati. Um, this is the standard screen that comes with it. But there is a taller touring screen. You'll notice the distance between the screen ending and the actual position of the handlebars is quite, quite it's quite a distance. Uh, there's no way in the world you could accidentally hit your neck or, or face on this. Um, if people, if you could just hold back on the questions for a little minute, I'll get through the questions I got and then come back to your questions so I can look and read them and then respond to them. But um, what what I noticed was, and the, unfortunately, the last two days, the wind uh, where we rode was really buffety. And look, I, I never got a good appreciation of this um, screen in terms of how it handles wind buffeting. Um, my sense was there's a little bit of buffeting and a number of the other riders certainly commented on buffeting. But I don't think it's fair to to put that out there yet because um, the air just wasn't still to make a proper comparison. But I just make you aware that's interesting. A, a, a taller guy has not had any problems with buffeting, but a number of people have said to me they've had buffeting. Uh, I, I simply don't know at this stage. I want to get in some still air and that'll happen in the next two weeks. I've got this bike for a couple of weeks. I'm going to take it on a full adventure but there's also other things I'm gonna do. I wanna do a slow motion suspension uh, test, what everyone loves, just so you can see that suspension working. So let's get on with these questions and then I can get on with the questions live. Um, seat height, do you need to be long-legged fella to ride it? No, seat height is really comfortable uh, for me. I'm 178 centimeters tall and I can put both feet almost flat on the ground. It's a real strength of the bike. And obviously the seat is adjustable. You can bring it up or down and there's different seats available. There's a rally seat that goes straight across for the taller riders. A couple of different seat options as you'd expect. But that standard seat and that setting and I can comfortably put my feet um, both on the ground almost flat became really important. I did some really tight technical muddy, muddy stuff. And what's really good is because the center of gravity is low on the bike, if I got a bit crossed up, I got stuck in the mud, and you'll see the video later on, and I could just put my feet down and, and just move through it and paddle through it until I got control. Not once did I feel like I was going to drop the bike, and you'll see later on that I did a lot of technical stuff. So um, let's keep going. Uh, is there any extra power USB sockets? Yes, there is. If we go around here, any known issues with the Desert X? Sounds like they're pretty reliable. We'll go into some of the things in a minute, but just hold back on questions for just a little second until I get through the ones I've got. There's your USB, straight into the, to the back. All right, I'll just keep going with these questions I already have, and then I'll come, and then we can start the live questions. Um, right, um, is ABS intrusive on dirt or mud? off completely you can obviously on this bike it's really sophisticated uh this i'm going to do a whole series on i'm oh, sorry a whole section probably a half an hour on the traction control of this bike you know the ktm husfana set the benchmark um this raises the benchmark a squidgen particularly in some of the uh abs control and um uh, some of the traction control features so we're continuing to see this, these improvements. And what's happening is those bikes such as the Triumph and Honda that have the older spec are starting to get left behind. So there's a, a little message out there for Honda and Triumph in particular. You've got, you've got a lift. I mean, traction control and ABS are getting far more sophisticated. Um, 
All right. Are the foot pegs good enough for the whole day standing out? Yes. There's the foot peg. The foot peg is broad. That This is the first bike I've actually got on. And I, I'm not saying to you, buy some rally pegs. Those my foot pegs, I stood on them for you know most of today. They were brilliant. The other thing is this um, adjustable uh, brake pedal, which is brilliant. It just pinched my finger. But um, you can raise it or lower it. Uh, that's on the raise setting. That setup for me was absolutely perfect. A real strength of the bike. Let's get going with these questions for a minute. Um, all right, um, Sir Jolly eighty one. Got to see you all. Oh, I got to see you all along Panorama Avenue. Bike looks good. Ryan Rowe. Ah, great. Been waiting for this bike. Glenn Wetner. Two up comfort and suspension adjustment for two up. Uh, hold fire on that. We've got to. Um, we've got to find someone to go two up with but we, we will do that because you there's a number of you have asked for that okay hi um alan mcdonald have they improved the engine ventilation uh is hot between the legs my experience with multis is that they are very hot interesting you raise this alan uh today when i was coming home and i got in the traffic the obviously the engine fan kicked in and i could certainly feel hot air uh, coming out of this vent and, and hitting me on the legs. And I know on a number of other Ducatis, I think it's the Multistrata, they've done a lot of work to push that air away. Uh, at this stage, this, this doesn't have that. And if there was an improvement I'd suggest uh, for Ducati to make is you, you can't in Australian conditions. Please hold back on your questions just for a little minute until I get rid through these. But you, you just, you know, if I had a little message for Ducati, you know, you could just bang that hot air away from the legs because uh, when we're, you know, wrestling bikes in the in the hot bush, uh, yeah, that that air is is hot air is pumping definitely pumping on our legs. So that's a very good question, and I know Ducati have done something with the multi strata, but not with this. Okay, um, next question: a premium bike and no windshield you can adjust. Not so premium. Look, I, I think that's an underhanded call, mate. I'll tell you why. Um, there are a number of premium bikes. The Norden 901, the Aprilia Touareg, and this bike. And they don't have adjustable screens. And they're all premium bikes. I, I don't have any reservation about saying that. But yes, it's interesting, this design. You know, everyone, you know, there's that tussle, I'd imagine, you know, when everyone's meeting to decide how the bike is going to look and feel. And it looks great, but, and the same with the Norden, and um, the same with the Aprilia. But when you do a design like this, you can't seem to have an adjustable screen. And uh, if there was one thing I'd say to manufacturers is sort it. You know, you've got to have functionality with form. You can't just have a pretty looking bike You've got to have a screen that works. And um, yeah, already there's a number of people saying with this screen, the standard screen, there's a bit of air movement. But again, for me, I just don't know at this stage. All right, keep going with these questions. Um, oh, here's a reference. Peter Mansbridge uh, made a reference uh, to something I wrote on social media. 9.5 litres per 100 Ks. Yeah, so when I was really thrashing this in the dirt yeah my fuel economy went up to 9.5 liters per 100 k's which um is really high but not surprising with these bigger twin bikes uh, the, the the reality is that you don't ride at that speed for very long and you don't thrash the bike for very that <laughs> that speed for very long and what i noticed is over the day the fuel economy got better and better and better so yeah, that was right. Yeah, when I was thrashing it, it got up to 9.5 litres per 100 k's. Um, okay. Okay, DKW125. I assume that the standard bash plate is up to it. Uh, DKW, I haven't looked at that in any depth yet. And, and that's something for the more detailed review. Uh, so I just haven't had time. Literally, the bike is still warm. The bike is still warm from the ride. I literally have just come back from the ride, had a bath, 
and uh, and then came out and I thought I'd just bring this to you live. I promised it to you, so that's what I've done. So don't know yet. Um, how hot does it run? This bike should be called a Stormtrooper. It's what Stormtroopers should ride if they didn't have um, speeders. Yeah, the um, it's got that kind of look. It's more, I'd say, a traditional Kajiva look, if you ask me, like the elephant, Kajiva elephant. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it does have a tendency to, um, when you're in city traffic and you're idling around, it does have a tendency to to turn on the air, the ventilation, as you'd think, to cool down the radiators, and that air is punching out here and getting you on the leg, and it's, yeah, it, it shouldn't be. Uh, right, next one. Um, here's an interesting thing, you know, some people, I'm going to read it out, but it just it kind of grates with me. Fat, heavy touring bike, be aware and decide wisely, adventure bikes only. Uh, if you lift it from the ground or some other gadgets die, it'll bring you to a halt. Um, I, look, yes, we know there's small adventure bikes and we've just built the CRF 300 Red Rooster and we get that. But we also appreciate it's a broad church and these mid-range adventure bikes, you know, we should recognise the effort that Ducati have done. This is their first one, this is their first bike that they've produced and they've come out with a cracker. And I just simply don't agree with that. Um, all of the bikes, be KTM, Tiger, Tiger's done a cracking, sorry, Triumph has done a cracking bike. The 890 Adventure R is a cracking bike. This is a cracking bike. But they're, for, they're mid range tourers and they do big miles really well. Uh, but they also handle the dirt and difficult stuff well. So, um, All oh, right, here's one. Peter Mansbridge, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, you journos should talk with someone that has actually tested the bike. And he says, me. Well, Peter, my intention is to... The, there's 60 people that have bought their uh, bikes in Australia now. And my intention is to um, go to some of those owners and have a chat with them about their Ducati experience, you know, right from the purchase right through. Now, before we start on questions and get ready for your questions, if you have any, I just want to talk about um, protection on the bike. Now, during the ride, and because we're riding in tough stuff, uh, two bikes fell. One fell, unfortunately, at slow speed and landed on a rock. Um, and the other, he was coming around a, a, a corner, and in the apex of the corner was a, was a rock about the size of my hand and he hit it and it and it hit it hit it with the front wheel and it brought down the bike uh and he landed very heavily both both of them landed very heavily the rock hit there with the tank which was unfortunate and with the other uh one both of them took out when i say took out scratched this and damaged this piece now that's a plastic piece and this is a metal piece and that the tank is actually metal you can hear it there and, and what happened in, in both cases, this um, it either has been um, dislodged or, or dented just here. Um, the crash bars, I, I would highly recommend that if you're going to ride this in the dirt that you get crash bars for it. I, it's just unnecessary to have, um, you know, to get damage like that. Um, you don't need to, a set of crash bars would just protect that uh, part of the tank. It's, you know, it's just a design, it, 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 it sticks out a bit. I mean, for people who just do mild dirt, it's not a problem, but those that, you know, are gonna test the limits of this bike and, and go off-road with it, I strongly recommend crash bars. It also protects the radiator. I mean, there's a bit of protection there in the end, but um, yeah, I, I, I can't help but think that um, crash bars are essential. Okay, so my questions uh, that I've had to read have completed now. So there's a bit of time now just quickly to run through any questions anyone has. Now's your time to um, give them to me. I'm looking at the, the screen of the Mac and I can um, see your questions if they pop up. Okay, I find the bike has too much high speed compression from and rear, which causes a course right over half surfaces. 
Uh, now, suspension's an interesting one. This bike literally only has 800 Ks on it. At the moment, I'm experiencing um, that the bike, I, I agree with you at the moment, and I think the bike suspension hasn't run in, and I will come back to this, or nor have I got it set up for, for my weight and purpose. So let, let's sit on that for a little while. For me, suspension has to bed in a bit. It's only had literally, I think, 800, 800 plus Ks. I don't even think, yeah, this, whatever we've done on it, that's what it's done. Uh, forks, you know, the shims kind of have to bed in. The same with the rear shock. Let, let's let see, let's come back to that and revisit it. At the moment, what I experienced with the suspension was um, the trail feel, those first, you know, a couple of centimetres of, of uh, the suspension where it's a little bit softer in the stroke to look after you uh, was lacking. Having said that, a number of people rode Nick Selleck's bike that has now got a couple of thousand kilometres on it and it was completely different. Take it to Clive, oh, take it up to Clive to get the suspension done. Yeah, the professor would like that, but I, I think that's early days. I don't, I don't think it needs that yet. Um, yeah, so when uh, we rode Nick Selleck's bike, I didn't personally ride it, but others did. The suspension was uh, had settled in and was using that trail fill. Okay, sorry, I missed that question then. I was just responding to the other. So if you want to just put it back up, you said, sorry, if I've asked that question, I just missed it as it faded away. Okay, any questions going once, going twice, or I'll tell you what, what we're heading and what we're going to do. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is wash the bike down, clean it. Uh, next thing I want to do, oh, Dave, I'll lend you my bike for a ride. It's hot. 13,000 uh, 13, kilometers on it. Have you noticed the suspension has settled in? It must have settled in. If it's not going to, it's not going to settle in at 13,000, it, it hasn't. I don't know if you've just noticed I've asked you a question back, but um, I would have, I would have thought that would have settled in. It's very stiff when I sat on it, but didn't get to feel the power muppet yeah look i the harder i pushed the bike i thought the suspension was excellent you'll see in the video that i'll be able to show you later on like i was seriously getting um getting launched any good two up you reckon don't know at this stage sp3 where we we will test that though there's a lot of interest in how this will go two up Suspension is good. I had it weighted with my gear for a ride from east to west. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Muppet. Seat was gold. Yeah, I don't mind. The seat, a couple of people commented it was a bit firm. Um, I was happy with it. Maybe my ass is, is um, used to riding a lot of bikes. I don't know. But uh, I found the seat good. And I found the position good, standing position. All right. So what are we going to do with this bike? We've got it for two weeks going to take it on a three-day Victorian high country adventure. How's that air filter engineering, Muppet? Hasn't changed. If there was a thing that I'd love to see Ducati to do in the future, it's got to make the air filter more accessible. Um, yeah, it's a 40-minute job to get the tank off to get to the air filter. So getting back to it, we're going to do this Victorian high country ride for three days. Uh, that's with a range of different bikes. And then, uh, and I'm also going to, oh, Paul, I'll get on the tyres in a second. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to film the suspension in slow motion. So they're the two jobs I've got during this two week. Um, yeah, so stock seat is excellent, according to Peter Mansbridge. Just needed a little bit of running in. In terms of tyres, uh, there's... I'm, there's a new Pirelli tyre coming out, I'm hearing. Um, and that uh, Pirelli tyre is a little bit more aggressive than these um, Scorpion Rally STRs. And, um, yeah, it'll be interesting how they perform. I didn't mind these tyres, the STRs on the bike. I think they're a good compromise, like road dirt compromise. Uh, but I just say in the front, when you're coming into sand sometimes you, uh, with this bike, you tend to, to push, push through the corner and uh, one of the riders uh, fell over. 
Uh, mate, Peter Mansbridge, Motos rallying on, on or the desert hard terrain, great on this. Hope it stops raining for you, wet as snowing in Hotham. That is crazy. And um, I do hope we get a good run. So we're going away Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so finish this. There's no more. I don't think we're going to do any more lives. May do one when we're down in um, Victorian high country. I've got to get on with now with the review. and uh, But most importantly, what I want to do is get a thorough understanding of this bike from a dirt-oriented adventurer's point of view. And, and that's going to take me a series of, of turns on the bike. I'm going to have this one for two weeks. And then a little bit later on, I'm going to, I'm going to have another bike um, for a couple of weeks. Are you riding the South of Threader? Apparently, that's the best road in Australia. Absolutely, we're going down there. Alrighty, so thank you so much for watching. Look, it's not everyone's cup of tea live. They, people whinge about the sound. The sound should be good today. And people whinge about the camera shaking. And um, But at the end of the day, some of you like it and you reach out and we have a good interaction. And it really helps me shape what you think is important uh, for the tests of the bike. So I, I really want to put my heart and soul into this. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great bike. It's... It, you know, it just makes that mid-level adventure bike area so competitive. Um, and, and we're spoilt for choice. Does it need fork protection? Fork, sock, fork, cover? Don't know. Um, yeah, Taylor, I just don't know. It seems pretty well covered, but I, I know what you're saying there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to the professor about these covers on forks. I don't know if they're good or bad. Because if you leave them on, you're just grinding away the fork. So I've I got to get some advice. Alrighty. So uh, thanks, Steve Lamb. There's a few um, landslides down our way, down the way we're heading, down the Victorian high country. Muppet, you need those as service mud protectors. I'm going to have a talk to Clive about them. Uh, Muppet before I put them on. I, I'm just concerned about grinding away the coating of forks. Um, otherwise, I'd put them on my 701. I think they'd be great. Alrighty, thanks for joining us. Thanks for the thousands of people that have viewed these four videos. I was quite surprised. But hey, it's just a, a fair income look at the bike. I bought from America. They are gold. Oh, that's those fork covers. Thanks, Muppet. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a video out. My, my next video for Mad TV that I'm working on at the moment is a, um, a comparison between my four favorite bikes under 400 cc's. And, you know, I've ridden them thousands of kilometers. I'm a real fan of the small adventure bikes, and I'm going to do a comparison. You're not going to see spec sheet comparison. You're not going to see riding around the backyard. You're going to see a fair income from the heart view. It's very much focused on um, it's very much focused on those entering our sport. Um, thanks, Clay, for your um, good wishes. Now there was one thing there. It was just a question I just missed the end of. How does it compare to the T7? The T7 um, is top heavy, without question. It is top heavy compared to this bike. Um, you know, I own a T7 and I love my T7, but the reality is it's top heavy compared to this bike. It doesn't have the power of this bike, and it certainly doesn't have the suspension of this bike. Um, my bikes had a lot of work to get that performing like a, a big motocrosser, um, and you know, I, I love my T7, but. If you buy a T7 straight off the showroom floor and you're an average rider, then the suspension's good. But if you push bikes a bit hard, then you'll find the limitations of that suspension. So, yeah, T7, um, and yeah, there's a price differential. But remember, this is 24700 on road in Australia. And the T7, when it first came out, it was a real value proposition because it was really cheap. I think it was 15 something. 
and and then you could say, oh well, we'll you know I'll put a thousand bucks into suspension and I'll I'll do all right. Um, the, if you notice, the T7 price has gradually notched up and it's got more and more. Um, yeah, it's just gradually gone up higher. So it's interesting. No one else has asked me about what I see as the key competitor to the to the Desert X in terms of this this group, you know, of the eight hundreds. Um, what about service cost? I don't know the service cost, but I know the service intervals are at fifteen thousand k's. There's a thousand k one, and then you've in Australia you've got to service those valves, and that's at thirty thousand kilometers, and that's a fixed price at six hundred dollars Australian. So you know they've made sure that that valve thingy that has to be adjusted um, doesn't, you know, doesn't cost too much. So the Ducati have been very sensitive to that. Competition is my twelve-year-old nine ninety R. Well, yeah, that's it's an interesting one. That's a very good bike. It's a cracking bike. Cost a million dollars to buy. So what do I think is the key competitor for the Ducati Desert X? Um, it'll be, to me, the KTM, the 2023 KTM 890 Adventure R, uh, which has some modifications and continues to evolve. I mean, it was already in, you know, the, the benchmark in terms of dirt performance. But the other one that everyone is talking about is the um, Aprilia Touareg. So this... We're just smothered for choice at the moment, and uh, it's a great place to be for adventure riders. Okay, I've rabbited on enough. Let's get on with it. Let's get the review done. We might have a bit of fun when we're down in the snowy mountains and just go live with Clubby and a couple of the guys we're riding with. It won't be Ducati specific. There's a whole range of different bikes going, and, and we hope to have some fun. Okay, thanks, uh, Muppet. Uh, Oh, hang on, one more. 890 suspension versus Desert X. Too early to talk about yet, Robs, but I will. I definitely will. There's a 450 G Caddy in the pipeline. Well, that's interesting. All right, I've got to go. Time for bed. I'm stuffed. The engine's still cooling down. Thanks very much. See you soon.